Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to this week's Lab Padre SpaceX update. This first week of 2024 proved to be extremely busy for SpaceX as they continue to march tirelessly towards IFT3. We have a lot to go over this week, so without further ado, let's dig in. Starting off this week shortly after midnight Friday morning, Booster 12 was rolled out of Mega Bay 1 and onto Highway 4. The Super Heavy then made its way to the Massey Outpost for its initial rounds of cryogenic proof testing and puck shucking. Later that morning, SPMTs were spotted heading into High Bay. About an hour and a half later, Ship 29 was moved into the building's doorway ahead of the day's second vehicle move. Meanwhile, Tug Addie Lou was spotted heading into Brownsville, towing the new Dawn Barge, loaded with the two vertical tanks as well as the seventh module of the next launch tower. Back at Starbase, work continued on the newest phase of the Star Factory expansion, as Sentinel Cam caught crews installing another roof beam on the building. Down at the launch site, the chopsticks were raised up the tower as SpaceX began preparations for the day's testing. With the road closed and the pad cleared, SpaceX moved forward with their final testing closure of the year. The test stand tank farm was spun up and the propellant loaded into Ship 28. Next, at 9.19 local time, fire once again erupted from the bottom of the Starship as it performed a single-engine static fire. Shortly after the static fire, Ship 29 was rolled onto Highway 4 in Down Remedios Avenue. Then, however, instead of turning into the rocket garden, the ship turned back into the build site and made its way into Mega Bay 2. Back down at the launch site, SpaceX was looking to end the year with a bang as the orbital tank farm was spooled up. Propellant was then loaded into Booster 10, giving it a partial load of methane and a full load of liquid oxygen. Then, about an hour and a half after Ship 28's test, Booster 10 fired its Raptors for the first time as it performed a surprising long-duration static fire. While all this testing was underway, the steel crew at the Star Factory kept pushing ahead as another column was installed. That afternoon, over at the Rocket Garden, workers continued to install more stringers on Ship 26. It isn't clear what SpaceX plans for this vehicle are, but it will be interesting to see what happens. A few hours later, the busy Friday continued as the ship thrust simulator was moved into the ring yard in preparation for receiving its next vehicle for testing. Next, one of the bridge cranes in the new Mega Bay used the two-point ship lifter and was hooked up to the hard points under Ship 29's forward flaps. Back at the launch site, with the day's tests finished, the chopsticks began to make their way down the tower and the QD arm was swung back in. That evening, a second two-point ship lifter was used by the high bay bridge crane to lift ship 30. The ship was then removed from its stand and transferred to the thrust simulator that had been moved into the building from the ring yard. Then shortly before 3 o'clock on Saturday morning, ship 30 was moved out of high bay and down highway 4 to the Massey's outpost. Later on Saturday morning, it became apparent that SpaceX was looking to remove Booster 10 from the launch mount following its static fire the day before. The transporter stand was moved out of its parking space next to Highway 4 and rolled back over by the orbital launch mount. Once the booster stand was out of the way, crews began preparing the area for the LR-11000 to roll through once again. After riding out the static fires next to the road, the crane needed to roll back to test stand B to swoop up ship 28. Later that morning, the booster quick disconnect on the launch mount was retracted, disconnecting booster 10 from the ground support infrastructure ahead of its return to the waiting transport stand. Then, shortly before noon, the SpaceX LR-11000 began to make its way across the launch site on its way to test stand B. At the same time, the chopsticks were moved into position around Booster 10 and raised to the lifting points. By mid-afternoon, preparations were complete and the chopsticks lifted Booster 10 out of the orbital launch mount. Then, the Super Heavy was transferred over and lowered onto its transport stand for an eventual return to the build site. Once the booster was secured onto its transport stand, the chopsticks were lowered back down to the base of the launch tower and the ship cook disconnect arm was rotated back into its resting position. 
On Sunday, Rover 2 Cam caught workers beginning to install new cryogenic piping on the recently installed pipe stands in front of the expanded horizontal section of the tank farm. At the Massey outpost on Tuesday, one of the cranes was hooked up to the top section of the structural testing device as crews began dismantling the lower parts of the section hanging from the crane. In the rocket garden, workers continue to add on to the second row of the external stringers that are being installed onto Ship 26. At the Star Factory expansion, crews continue to make steady progress with the steel installation on this latest section of the building. Out in front of the section, the new concrete footings are being added, indicating that the part of the building will extend further towards Highway 4 than the previous area. Shortly before noon, down at the build site, Booster 10 started to move. The Super Heavy was moved back across the launch site to the D2 gate. There, the vehicle was rolled out onto Highway 4, where it headed back towards the build site, likely for final preparations needed to ready it for launch. Over at the launch site D1 gate, the entrance's new guard shack is really beginning to take shape. The concrete formwork has been removed from the building's walls, while the supports for its roof are still visible inside. With this concrete exterior, it looks like SpaceX is building this to withstand the forces of a launch. Down at the orbital tank farm, a new liquid oxygen pump was spotted arriving on a flatbed trailer. After a couple of aborted attempts, the pump was eventually offloaded and set out of the way to await installation. Back up Highway 4 at the build site, Booster 10's grid fins were rotated while the vehicle sat just outside the door of Mega Bay 1. Just a few minutes later, the rocket was rolled into the building. About an hour later, Booster 10 was connected to the load spreader hanging from both bridge cranes. Both cranes were used because a fully stacked Super Heavy with 33 Raptors is over the load limit for one of the cranes alone. Next, the booster was placed back onto the booster engine installation stands. It's not yet clear if they're intending to change any of the Raptors or if they're just using the stand as a work stand. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, the launch site LR-11000 lowered its hook and picked up the ship lifting squid in preparation for removing ship 28 from test stand B. With Booster 10 once again secured to the engine installation stand in Mega Bay 1, its transport stand was rolled back out of the building and into the ring yard. The prototype hot staging ring was spotted being removed from the hot stage load head test article. It isn't yet clear if SpaceX is looking to finally scrap these or if they have some other use in mind. In High Bay, Ship 32 was lifted up off of the turntable and placed onto an awaiting stand as production of this final version 1 Starship continues to move along at a steady pace. Also, early on Wednesday, a concrete pump truck was spotted placing new concrete in the area near the orbital launch mount's flame deflector tank farm. As the sun finally took to the sky on Wednesday, Booster 10's transport stand was moved to the build site gate in preparation for it being removed from the ring yard area. At the Massey's outpost on Wednesday, the busy nature of the site in recent months was evident by the full skyline complete with cranes, a booster, and a starship. At the new warehouse building, we can see that the upper section of the structural test cage was no longer visible, though still connected to the crane, indicating that much of its lower structures had now been removed. At the new warehouse building, crews were visible on the roof as they worked to install the roof panels to finally get the building weather tight. Throughout the day on Wednesday, new deliveries of steel for the Star Factory expansion continued to roll into the build site. The steel workers continue to make steady progress with installing the new steel, but the delivery seemed to be outpacing them for the moment. Once Ship 32 had been secured to its transport stand, it was disconnected from the high bay bridge crane. Down at the build site, crews were seen working to get Ship 28 ready for its removal from the test stand. The aft flaps were chained together and crews were spotted working in the area around the vehicle's quick disconnect. Around 2 p.m. local time, Booster 10's transport stand was rolled out of the ring yard and onto Highway 4. The stand then began moving back to the Sanchez site, likely for storage while B-10 goes through final launch preparations in Mega Bay 1. 
With the heavy lifting for Starbase's second Mega Bay now completed, the LR-11000 was no longer needed to assist in the final stages of the building construction. To that end, on Wednesday, the crane was turned away from the new Mega Bay and eventually lowered the tip of its luffing jib to the ground. Once it was down, crews could remove the crane's hooks and begin the process of dismantling the crane. The big mystery now is what will happen to this crane? Will it stay here at Starbase, go back to Florida, or leave SpaceX for parts unknown? Tell us what you think in the comments below. By mid-afternoon, crews went up on the lifts to Ship 28's nose cone and connected the Starship to the LR-11000 via the ship lifting squid. Over at the tank farm, the recently arrived liquid oxygen pump was unwrapped and lifted by a crane to allow workers access to it to prepare for its installation in the near future. About an hour later, Ship 29 was lifted by the two-point ship lifter in Mega Bay 2 and transferred onto the building's newly installed ship engine installation stand. As night fell on Starbase, the tank farm at the Massey's outpost came to life. In relatively short order, cryogenics were loaded into Ship 30 as the Starship performed its first cryogenic proof test. Just after midnight on Thursday morning, preparations were completed and the LR-11000 finally lifted Ship 28 off the test stand B and transferred it to an awaiting transport stand. Even in the early hours of the morning, progress on the Star Factory expansion continued to push forward as a concrete pump truck was spotted placing fresh concrete for the building's foundations. Meanwhile, Ship 31 was picked up by a pair of SPMTs from the Rocket Garden and then taken on a short trip down Remedios and Highway 4 before ending up in the ring yard. Once in the ring yard, the workers began shifting the counterweights and shifting the SPMTs to better maneuver the vehicle into position in the relatively tight confines of High Bay. By mid-morning, Ship 28 was secured to the transport stand and the ship lifting squid was disconnected from the Starship for what should be the last time. With the concrete work from the early morning wrapped up, the steel workers took back the Star Factory construction site. New steel continued to roll in as workers kept pushing forward with its installation while the building's framework continues to grow towards High Bay. Meanwhile, the SPMT repositioning was finished and Ship 31 was picked back up and driven into High Bay. The Starship spent roughly the past month and a half in storage at the Rocket Garden in order to make room for other ships to be worked on in this building. Another look at the D1 gate guard shack on Thursday showed us that the temporary roof supports had been removed and crews were working on installing the window frames as well as fitting out the building's interior. With Ship 28's static fire testing campaign now finished, it should be done on the test stand. As a result, the Starship should no longer need its nose cone lifting lugs. To that end, crews went up in lifts and began removing them to pave the way for final tiling when the ship gets back to High Bay. Rovercam caught a telescopic crane with a lattice boom extension inside of Mega Bay 2, lifting what is likely door frame hardware for installation. By mid-afternoon, workers had removed all of the lifting points from Ship 28's nose cone. It is worth noting that none of the ships after 28 have lifting points in their nose cones, but rather are being lifted using the two-point ship lifters. With the lifting lug removal completed, Ship 28 was ready to roll. Around 3 p.m. local time, SpaceX's Flight 3 Starship began rolling across the launch site. It then turned onto Highway 4 and followed its escorts back up the road to the build site. Once there, the ship turned into the ring yard gate and was staged in front of High Bay. Thursday also saw the return of pump drama to the orbital tank farm. Many of us remember the seemingly endless swapping of pumps when SpaceX was working to bring Stage Zero online, but recently the pumps had seemed reliable. With the delivery of a new pump earlier in the week, however, it came as no surprise when crews began working to remove one of the liquid oxygen pumps to replace it. A lot of activity was also observed on the chopsticks on Thursday. The chopsticks did seem to take a bit of a beating during the second integrated flight test. Finding better ways to protect them is likely a high priority for SpaceX. When they are ready to begin attempting to catch the booster, the chopsticks will need to be operating almost immediately after launch to get in position. A truckload of cribbing was delivered to the orbital tank farm on Thursday, then laid out in front of the vertical tanks, paving the way for the LR-11000 to move into the work area. 
By that evening, preparations were completed inside of High Bay. The bridge crane picked up the two-point ship lifter and moved out of the way as Ship 28 was rolled into the building for final launch preparations. Shortly before midnight, the cryo shell load spreader was moved to the launch site from where it had been stored at Sanchez. With this load spreader and the cribbing, it was very evident that SpaceX was preparing to begin dismantling parts of the vertical tank farm. In Florida on Friday, Kurt J. Crosby towed just read the instructions out of Port Canaveral. The pair headed north to Charleston, likely for repairs to the drone ship following the toppling of B-1058 last week. On Sunday afternoon, Signet Warhorse 3 brought a short fall of Gravitas back into port with Falcon 9 Booster 1069 following the Starlink Group 6-36 mission. Around mid-afternoon on New Year's Day, the port side crane lifted B-1069 off of the deck of a short fall of Gravitas and transferred it to the dockside stand for processing. That evening, Bob headed out of Port Canaveral in support of fairing recovery operations for the year's first launch out of Florida, the Offzone 3 mission. On Wednesday morning, Doug steamed back into port from its mission way downrange, having recovered both of the fairing halves from the Falcon Heavy USS F-52 launch. That evening, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 had the honor of being the first rocket to launch from Port Canaveral in 2024 as it took off from Space Launch Complex 40 for the Off Zone 3 mission. About eight minutes later, the rocket ignited some of its Merlins for the third time of the night as it came in for a successful touchdown at Landing Zone 1. On Thursday, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back out to sea in preparation for the next Starlink mission. This drone ship will likely have a very busy schedule until just read the instructions can return to duty. That evening, Booster 1069 was lifted off the dockside stand and laid onto the horizontal transporter ahead of its return to Hangar X for refurbishment in preparation for its 13th mission. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.